Rum Explorers. I'm Nia. I'm a rum enthusiast and it is rum time. So today we're exploring Copper Bottoms Port Finished Rum. Thank you so much to Paul from Drums and Rums. He did gift me this amazing bottle for my birthday. This is batch number two and also this bottle in particular you can only pick up at the distillery in Holy Hill. If you have not heard of this distillery, please go watch my original review of their silver rum. I'll put the card right up above here. Make sure you check that out. That is one of my favorite silver or white rums. If you have not tried it, it is incredibly smooth. That, for me, it replaces any other of the white or silver rums you have tried before. Specifically, most people like Bacardi White or Silver. I don't. I prefer Copper Bottoms um, Silver Rum. So this particular rum is aged two years in once used bourbon Kentucky barrels. It's aged two years. Then moved to freshly empty cask of Italian Ruby Port. Now, typically, I would expect something on the sweeter side for this. But let's give it a try because if you saw my last review, Empery kind of disappointed on the sherry cast. I thought it was going to be very sweet as well, but it wasn't. These bottles are absolutely stunning. The Craig family does such an amazing job. This is a family owned and ran distillery in Holy Hill in Florida. I still have not had the pleasure of visiting them. I'm very excited to do so one day. If you do not follow me on IG, make sure you do so because I do post little random things here and there. So this weekend we actually picked up the very first Florida Distillery Trail map at Chambridge Distillery. If you're in South Florida, go there. You can pick this up. This is amazing. It's an amazing new map that the Florida Craft Spirits Association just came back. So basically they have a little map and guess what? Copper Bottom is on there. So make sure you hit that subscribe button because I will be visiting Copper Bottom sometime this year. And I'm excited to get my little stamp here. So let's dive into this. Wait for this beautiful pop. Ooh, that was a good one. So they use plastic corks, but the actual bottle top it's this wood and they have their beautiful ship on the top i also love the fact that the the name of the distillery is based on a 18th century seafaring term used for somebody that's reliable trustworthy so copper bottom is what they would call people so wow that smells really interesting i'm gonna let this breathe for a little bit now this bottle was given to me by Paul from Drums and Rums. I am an alum of his podcast. Make sure you subscribe to his podcast and YouTube channel. I love the fact that he's now on YouTube as well and you can see the video of his um, amazing guest that he has. We just went through the month of March and he had all these amazing drummers and rummers that were female. So it was great to see that this um, past month. So I'm going to start by pouring just a smidge of this. And by the way, this particular bottle is 86 proof, 43 alcohol by volume. And it says that it's small batch number two. So lucky number two this time. As far as the legs. It's running kind of slow. There's some beautiful beating here. This distillery also prides themselves on not adding any sugars or coloring. So this beautiful coloring you see is from the actual casks, which is gorgeous. Not only do they have it, the stamen up in front with a cute little anchor, 
but they also have it in the back with a big no and then add colors or artificial flavors. So I'm excited to try this one. Thanks, Paul. Okay, so diving into the journal classifications, this is gonna be an aged type of rum. As far as the Gargano classification, this is going to be a single blended rum because they use pot and column stills to distill the sugar king. And then as far as the Royal Rum Society, from a one to a nine, they gave it a seven because it is a little bit on the sweeter side, not too sweet, but the Porto cast definitely give it a very unique flavoring. Then as far as the bland to flavorful category, I, I am giving this an E because as, as this rum goes through your palate, it definitely develops as it goes through and even up your nose. It's very beautiful. It's very, um, it lingers in the back and then as far as harsh or smooth I'm gonna give this a medium because it does have a little bit of a hug but it's very smooth just a little bit of a hug not too much but when it hits the back of your mouth after it you get all the harshness of the alcohol you do get a lot of sweetness to it kind of like dried Fruits, I'd say the um, apricots is the closest thing that it reminds me of and then on the initial palette I am getting kind of a whiskey feel out of this which is very interesting because it is a rum so I wonder if the ex once used Kentucky bourbon cask is having that feel and then the mix of the um, the Italian ruby port is also having a little bit of that but the most interesting thing is that it lingers quite a bit and I am getting a little bit of an oily feel at the end. Like I keep enjoying it in spite of me just having a couple of sips, which is quite beautiful. Now, as far as the Porto, I can't get the on the nose a lot of the Porto cask smell. It does say that I should be detecting oaky smell, which I do, but the beautiful part of this is it seems like the porto because it's it's freshly extracted from these barrels it you definitely get a heavy nose of the porto if you're not familiar with porto it is a sweet wine which is served after dinner kind of like when you're very very full and they give it to you so it kind of settles the food down so i am getting a little bit of sweetness but not overpowering also because this company prides themselves on not putting any additives i'm quite surprised with the flavorings of this because you do get a little bit of sweetness but think of that natural sweetness don't think of the sugars or honeys or anything else that anybody's putting in their rums out there not criticizing just my personal opinion that this specific rum gets a very beautiful note off of that so based on the royal rum society's code taste code for this one I'm giving this a 7 EM, 7 because it's a little bit on the sweeter side, E because it's quite flavorful, and M because it's medium as far as smooth to harsh. On the whiskey exchanges flavor camps, I am giving this a fruit, fruity and spicy on their category, on their flavor camps, because you do get the dried fruits, but at the end, like I said, you do get that lingering oiliness to it a little bit, but you also get a little bit of the peppery, spicy, not too heavy. It's honestly, I'm super impressed, but not surprised because if you know me, I'm a huge fan of Copper Bottom. I need to, need to, need to go visit the Craig family and give them a huge kudos. Now, is this treasure chest approved or not? Hell yeah. You know why? This is so unique. As far as the price point, it is $75. So it is a little bit, you know, on the pricier side, but it's a very unique rum. You, I feel like this encompasses everybody in one rum. You get, if somebody likes a little bit on the sweeter side, 
you got that. If somebody likes more on the bourbons or whiskeys, you got that. As far as like if somebody doesn't like weak spirits, something on the medium, you got that as well. This is a great addition to my treasure chest. So I am gonna add it. Once again, thank you so much, Paul from Drums and Rums. If you have not subscribed to his channel, do so. I'll put his uh, information in the description below. I also highly recommend following him and his amazing podcast. He has incredible guests, World Star Drummers, World Star Rummers, which is amazing. I am very impressed with this bottle. I can't wait to visit Copper Bottom and meet everybody there. And um, if you have not hit that subscribe button, make sure you do so okay, so I can welcome you on board. I am excited to add this to my treasure chest and uh, I look forward to the next room. Cheers. Thank you, Paul.